Hey, what's up? My name is Swag. Have you got your operator yet? So, operators are quite a spoiler if you haven't played for that long. And why right at this point you should click off the video if you don't know what an operator even is. Good. So, today we're going to talk about operators. Covering everything you need to know about them, why you absolutely need one, and how you can upgrade your operator to become viable in your daily gameplay. But first, if you like these kinds of videos, hit that like button and subscribe for more videos surrounding Warframe guides, builds, and random bullshittery every Thursday. Even though it's Saturday, but it's been a busy week, okay? Right, let's first cover what an operator is. The operator is another name for a Tenno. Now, Tenno's are the children who were aboard an Oricon ship called the Zariman 10 0 during the Void Era. The ship had a Void Jump accident, which sent everyone aboard it into the Void. A Void referring to a subdimensional space where anything and everything can happen. The Zariman 10 0 was recovered intact a few days later. The Oricon looked for survivors, only to find a group of children who had received inexplicable powers through the Void. Being the power-hungry Golden Overlords, the Orokin took great interest in the newly gained powers of the Tenno and started experimenting with them, trying to get the children to use their powers effectively. It was only when an Orokin researcher called Margulis had a breakthrough, which involved making the Tenno dream that the Tenno could control their powers. Harnessing their powers and being able to control our beloved Warframes through a process called Transference the Tenno were put in individual sleeping pots on the moon to make sure they could operate Warframes from a safe place. Now, all of this is fine and dandy, but as a Warframe player, how do you even unlock your operator? Now, it's not as easy as many make you believe, but it's also not incredibly hard. Let's first go over the quests needed to be completed and then hop over to the actual unlocking. So the quests needed to unlock the quests that'll unlock the operator are Force Prize, once Awake, The Arcwing, Stolen Dreams, The New Strange, and Nata. Now of course all of these quests will have their own requirements, but let's just pretend we're not playing a looter shooter that needs some grinding. Cool, so after the Nata quest you get to the second dream, which not only is the first cinematic quest, but it's also one of, if not the best, in the game. The requirements are quite low. You only have to have the previously mentioned quest completed, you need to be Mastery Rank 3 and have everything leading up to the Neptune Junction completed. Now to avoid spoilers in general, I won't talk about this quest at all and just say that it simply unlocks your operator, focus schools and a new room in your orbiter. Though not fully back to their true power, the Tenno seem to have forgotten their way a little bit, forgotten their strength. So in rules, quest number 2, The War Within, which is also a pretty dope quest to play through. Finishing the War Within will grant you access to the Quills and Little Duck on Cetus and Fortuna. Now, I've already made a video on the Quills, so click the little card or the link in the description below for more info on that. With access to these people, the Tenno can start harnessing their power by focusing it through something called an Amp. Amps are made out of different parts, concentrating the Tenno's void energy and enabling them to release its force through a boatload of different configured prisms making the focus school you chose a little more important, depending on what you do. Speaking about focus schools, as previously mentioned, we get to choose a focus school at the end of the second dream. Now it doesn't really matter what you choose, since we are able to unlock all schools with the appropriate amount of focus gained, but there are five schools in total. Madurai, School of the Fighters. Bazarin, School of the Protectors. Naramon, School of the Tacticians. Unairu, School of the Indomitable, and Zenerik, School of the Arcane. Those descriptions don't really tell you what you get from them though. So in order to learn about focus schools, you have to enter operator mode in your orbiter, turn on the focus tab and read through the abilities. While most of them are pretty self-explanatory, let me quickly tell you what school is used for what purpose 90% of the time. Just as a pre-note, note that every school aside from fixed abilities also has two waybound skills or passive waybounds. These passive skills when ranked up to their max can be unlocked and used on any focus school. So keep that in mind. Right, use cases. Madurai. Madurai has inner gaze and eternal gaze as its waybounds, increasing amp and void beam energy while also increasing their regeneration. 
Now, Madurai is mostly used for the ability called Void Strike when fighting Eidolons on the Plains of Eidolon. When leaving Void Mode, the next 8 attacks deal X% percent additional damage for every second spent cloaked, basically meaning you can amplify the damage you do by a large margin. Bazarin. Bazarin has Rejuvenating Tides and Enduring Tides as its waybounds to increase your operator's health and health regeneration. The school is mostly taken for the Protective Dash ability, which grants immunity to allies for 4 seconds and heals them for 45% over 5 seconds when you dash through them. Naramon Naramon has Mind Step and Mind Sprint as its waybounds, increasing your operator movement and Void Dash speed. Affinity Spike and Power Spike are the most used nodes here. Affinity Spike gives you 45% more affinity on melee kills, while Power Spike changes your combo counter behavior. Where it would previously just reset if you lose combo, it will now slowly decay, depleting at a more comfortable rate, which enables you to keep your combo counter up. Unairu has Basilisk Scales and Basilisk Gaze as its weight bounce, increasing your operator armor and Void Blast radius. Unairu is used almost exclusively for Eidolon hunts as well, because the skill Unairu Wisp summons a Wisp when you damage an enemy with Void Blast. These Wisps can be picked up and increase your operator damage by 100%. Combining that with Basilisk Gaze will make any Tridolon squad love you. Xenerik Xenerik has Void Flow and Void Siphon as its waybounds, increasing operator energy and operator energy regeneration. Xenerik is used for a bunch of things. Most prominently for Energizing Dash though, which creates a zone of energy for 8 seconds. When you or allies pass through the zone, they gain energy for 30 seconds. However, Energy Pulse and Void Singularity are also very helpful. One giving you more energy per energy or picked up, and the other pulling in enemies while cloaked. I'd say what focus school to invest in first is completely dependent on what content you want to play. However, if you want to unlock everything and min-max the crap out of gaining focus, you're best left to take one of the Eidolon dominant schools. The start will be quite slow, but since you're still learning the ropes, I find it better to not lay a huge importance on a new set of skills like this anyway. Every ability and every school has to be unlocked with a big chunk of focus being present beforehand as well. Which brings us to the fun part. Knowing all of this is fine and dandy, but how do we even gain focus, and what is one of the most effective ways to gain focus faster? So at its bare basics, you gain focus by equipping a focus lens on your weapon or warframe, and finish missions first and foremost. You will almost always gain a small amount of focus that way. I'll explain that in, in a second. Now focus lenses come in a few different variations. We've got irregular lenses, greater lenses, Eidolon lenses, and Lua lenses, of which all can only be equipped on mastered warframes and weapons, since they can only convert excess affinity. These lenses need to be built, so prepare for some farming. The difference between lenses is, regular lenses convert 1.25% of the gained affinity into focus and are a resource needed to make greater lenses. These can be farmed from bounties on all open worlds. Greater lenses consume 4 regular lenses, an Argon Crystal and a Forma to grant you 1.75% of affinity gained into focus. Blueprints are available from the market segment for credits. Eidolon lenses can convert 2.25% of affinity gained into focus and can only be farmed from the Cetus bounties, consuming your greater lens and 5 breaths of Eidolon in the process. Lastly, Lua lenses convert 3.25% of excess affinity into focus. As the name suggests, these can only be found on Lua, doing Rotation C disruption runs, consuming your Eidolon lens and 5 somatic fibers which drop from Demolists. So you can go out, have lenses equipped on everything and just do your normal missions, if that suits your needs, it's totally viable. However, if you want to become an Eidolon hunting powerhouse or laugh at Grenier soldiers in your human form while dashing around them like the Flash, there are 2-3 to three main methods. Firstly, Elite Sanctuary Onslaught or ESO. Now, there's two roles here, which are important to identify so you know where to put your lens. There's also the importance of solo farming, but I'll touch on that in a second. The first role is the DPS. If you run a Saren, Volt, Mirage, or whatever, and do the majority of the killing, you will want to equip the lens on your Warframe, since that is where you'll gain the most affinity with. The second role is the support. Think your Wisp, Trinity, etc. 
You want to unequip companions, sentinels and their weapons, your own weapons except for your melee, and put the lens on your melee because of the way affinity distribution works. Thirdly, put a lens on your warframe and melee weapon, specifically when playing Volt or Saren solo to get the most out of your runs. Lastly, there's the solo silent Adaro run with either a Nivara or Equinox. 500% affinity boost while killing enemies silently will fill your daily focus cap real quick. Now for team runs, I'll always suggest ESO, simply because every round after round one will give you a convergence orb right away. Convergence orbs give you an 8 times to 16 times multiplier on the affinity and therefore the focus you gain. They stack up the more you progress through the rounds, making it easier than ever to obtain around 120,000 to 200,000 focus within 8 rounds when equipped with Lua lenses. My last point on focus is you can circumvent your focus cap by hunting Eidolons and redeeming Eidolon shards for focus in the operator menu. These don't count to your daily standing cap, so realistically speaking, you can get up to a million focus in a breeze. So now you know who your operator is, what they can do, provided with a school and how to gain focus in order to power your operator up. But what is their actual use? Well, you see a lot of players use their operator sparingly, be it because they simply don't like the mechanic, don't understand what is going on yet, or because they're simply not far enough ahead. That is what I'm trying to change with this video, since the operator has multiple uses. First and foremost, we got mobility. A decked out operator can move through maps quicker than most Warframes can, and even do damage in the process. You get to hunt Eidolons a lot quicker, which also makes the fight more enjoyable, which in turn gets you more focus, so it's kind of a win-win. Using the operator instead of rolling guard or any other oh fuck button is quite handy, and while you're in void mode you might as well CC the enemy, drag them in for a swift kill, or heal your teammates. And also, operator only missions. While they aren't a thing in the game, yet, you can most definitely do this on your own accord and have some fun not being overpowered. Lastly, Operator Arcanes. Arcanes on operators are mostly pretty mild. Some buff your operator in Warframe with, for example, more armor, while others put the enemy in a coma or drag them in like a makeshift lobin. I'd say Arcanes are incredibly situational, though I like to run Magus Elevate and Magus Lockdown. Magus Elevate because I'm a noob and need healing sometimes, and, and Magus Lockdown to CC enemies when I need them to not run around like headless chickens. We're coming to an end with Operator Customization. Now, Operators are quite finicky with appearance, since it's a matter of personal taste. Just be aware that you can get a lot of cosmetics from Little Duck, the Quills, or from Teshin while other cosmetics can be purchased through sets in the market section. Most cosmetics that have to do with the face though will run you cash for Tenogen items or platinum for in-game items, and there are also Baroque tier models out there. So I guess the conclusion of if you should use an operator depends on your willingness to grind a little for some equipment that makes it a much more enjoyable experience. But then again, at the end of the day, it's your choice. Again, if you liked the video, do leave a like and subscribe for more Warframe guides, builds, discussions, and more. Next week, we're going to look at a very cool Nidus Prime concept that my community and me came up with, or rather, say, you guys and me came up with uh, during a discussion on our Discord server. So, um, yeah, fun. Stay safe out there, Tenno. Later.